All right, join us now on the first episode of season three of Inside TBT. Now on the Pacers, but you probably remember him from making the million dollar shot. Keeper Sykes, welcome to the show. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me, man. I'm excited to be here. Uh, is that how it goes, man? Whoever hit that Elam Ender, uh, they they the million dollar man into the next year. And you're exactly right. We had Dina I'll on the first it. episode last year. You're you're exactly right. Yeah, I'll take it. I was gonna say, man, because I played against Dina a lot and all of that. So yeah, I'll take it, man. I'll I'll, I'll that I'll hang my hat on that this year, and uh, somebody got to ch- try to come reclaim it. No doubt. No doubt. Well, we're excited to have you, man. This is a long time in the making. Obviously, you know, Kiefer Sykes is in the news for a lot of really great reasons right now, which is awesome. So it's great to talk to you. Before we dive into all that fun stuff and the recent stuff, we got to talk TBT, which is why we have you on here. Winning that tournament, obviously, you're not the same TBT vet as a lot of uh, other guys are in the tournament. What did it mean to, to take home the, the trophy? Uh, man, it, it meant a lot to me um, to, to win the TBT. I mean, it's crazy thinking of the odds and the chances of of actually winning that tournament. You know, uh, for me, I'm like, man, it's 64 teams. Like, this is steep. Like, the chances are probably one in thousands, of, you know, hundreds of thousands or something like that. But, but man, it just meant it meant the world for me as an individual, yeah, to, to, to win that tournament, you know, especially the journey that I've taken, you know, playing abroad, playing in so many different countries, um, you know, I, I kind of took the challenge where, hey, this is a chance for me to prove to all the guys that are playing, you know, that's not in the NBA, that, uh, you know, I'm one of the better players no matter what country. So, uh, you know, very exciting tournament. You know, play with a good group of guys, play with Boheim's Army. And, um, man, it meant everything, man, to play on ESPN in front of my family. Um, the way it happened with us playing in Peoria where, you know, I'm from uh, Chicago, Illinois, where I played the state tournament. Um, in Peoria, you know, my head coach is now the head coach at Bradley, where the bracket, where our regional was at. Um, man, that tournament is, is do, it's done everything for me. Obviously, it's catapulted me to be an NBA player today. So, man, I, I, I'm forever, you know, grateful. I'm forever a fan, um, forever in history uh, with this TBT. And, uh, man, I, 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 I really... I really would want to play again, but I mean, I hope hopefully I'm in the NBA next year. But man, it was such a fun experience, man. Just such a, a a fun experience, and maybe I feel like I'm one of the players that made the most out of it. So it just means a lot to me. So I want to talk a little bit about the guys that you played with, but mm-hmm. you know, you mentioned it kind of propelled you to the next level. Maybe one of the craziest TBT moments ever is a few seconds after the shot goes in. There's tweets that you signed a deal with the Pacers. Now, mm-hmm. Joey and I aren't, aren't, you know, doctors or scientists, but we know you weren't signing the deal, you know, yeah. in between the time that the shot went up and went in. You got to walk us through that. I mean, what, what, how did that go down? Yeah, so it was crazy. I actually signed the deal a couple of days before. I mean, it was really just a training camp Exhibit 10 deal. Uh, obviously, the Pacers, were close to, Pacers are close to home. Um, I felt like I had a chance to make this roster at some point in the year. And, um, you know, this is one of the teams that said, hey, you can finish playing, you know, the TBT and still come to Summer League with us. So, man, it just happened. So it just happened perfectly where, you know, I signed. I mean, nobody knew. So I'm just playing to win. I hit the shot. It happens to be me to hit the shot. And then, yeah, Sam, uh, Shams and Wolves just, you know, put out that I, you know, just signed to the Pacers after hitting the game winner. So, um, you know, great job by my agent for not putting the news out before, you know, and then great jobs uh, from the league and, and, and Sham, those NBA reporters who, you know, I guess waited to see what happened and it just happened to, you know, happen that way and transpire that way where I, I was the one that hit a shot who had a, you know, summer league training camp, an NBA deal. So, so um, man, that, that just brought so much more attention to me, so much more attention to the tournament. And um to be honest with you, I mean, I think that helped the pace. It helped turn their heads. You know, when I, you know, got off the got off the got off the plane and landed in Indiana, you know, it was already so much buzz when I was going to sign in with sign uh, those forms with the GM, and uh, I think that helped them give me an actual, you know, actual good look, a fair chance. 
Well, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because something we're curious about is are, are guys coming up to you even now saying, Hey, you're the guy that hit the million dollar shot last year. Yeah. I mean, ever since that happened, um, you know, people have been hitting me up about the shot. Uh, I'm sure, like I said, Diener and those guys hit the shot, but I think the way that, you know, me hitting the shot, signing with the Pacers, um, you know, just that tweet alone, you know, before anything that I did in camp or anything like that, um, you know, that just put that just brought more interest and, you know, entry to, to me and my game and what, I, what I'm able to do on the court. So, um, man, it was fun winning that championship. And, uh, yeah, we could talk about those guys. Man, I love that team. Love the GM, Kevin, uh, Sean, you know, all those guys, E, all those guys that came around and recruited me, did a good job. And uh, one thing I like to tell people, I mean, it was the, the million dollar shot that I hit. But, man, we had to win six games and. To go to war with those guys and to win six ball games, man, it's very hard to win the TBT. And, um, you know, we was able to do it, and I'm happy we did it. A question that I have to ask, and you're probably not going to want to answer, is who mm -hmm. was your favorite teammate? Guy maybe you still talk to now, guy you knew before going into it. Who Who is your guy? Man, to be honest, man, I, I, I've built a special relationship with all those guys. Uh, one thing that I will say is um, the guy that I looked up to a lot well, two of the guys I looked up to a lot, you know, joining this team was, uh, you know, Eric and um, Tyrese Rice. You know, Tyrese Rice, you know, being a smaller guard like me, um, you know, having success abroad, you know, me playing him like once or twice overseas, uh, me being in the same uh, like Champions League and things with him and him winning MVP. And then just E, um, you know, just being a McDonald's All-American, you know, people know of his legacy, you know, on and off the court. Um, you know, all those guys with, you know, me being, I would say, the youngest out of the guys that, you know, were non, you know, Syracuse alumni, you know, all those guys inspired me. Um, so, man, I, I got to get credit to all those guys. You know, DJ Kennedy, who's, you know, five time now, you know what I'm saying? Just his leadership, DeAndre Kane, uh, Chris McCollum, like, you know, all those guys, you know, from, from the top to bottom, um, you know, all those guys, we're still in close contact. And uh, for sure, we're going to try to defend that title. And, you know, if, if I'm in the NBA, I'm still going to, you know, try to be with those guys and on the bench. But, man, such a special group. You know, even a coach, Jeremy Pope, for him to do it in his first year. Uh, you know, it kind of feel like we rock stars, man. We want to go make it run at it again. <laughs> I, so, I will say, we'll, I'll speak for Andrew, too. We don't want you in the TBT next year. No. Yeah, I, I don't want to either, man. I, I tell people uh, – after hitting that shot, I want to retire on that shot. Yes. Overall in the tournament, I'm nine and one. So I'm like, all right, this is my perfect 10, perfect 10, 10 games to walk away on. There you go. My, mm -hmm. my last uh, Bayheim's Army question for you. Uh, I think it was the championship game. Joey and I attempted to go into the locker room at halftime. DeAndre Kane was a little frustrated, letting it be heard. We were, mm -hmm. we were asked, not this game. Please get out of the locker room. Yeah. So he's like that every game. Just to let you all know, he's like that pretty much <laughs> game at halftime, especially if we lose it. <laughs> well, my question is, how does he compare intensity wise to some you know other teammates that you've had in the past? He's number one to me. Like me and his relationship, he's number one to me. Just his like it, it was like we were like yin and yang because like I have that same fire, and I lead as well, but he's like more of like a a loose cannon and I'm more like a control, you know, control crazy. So man, it was so, our, our dynamic was so, it was, it was so amazing. I'll give you a moment. Um, so in the Marquette game, we're down seven. And, um, you know, from the start, you know, Kane is like, like hey, we, we, we dive on every loose ball. We get in every loose ball. Like nothing, everything is unacceptable to him. Like he's holding everyone accountable. And, um, you know, me being a leader, like I said, man, I, I try to lead you know, and just be timely with what I do. But uh, at that point, we were down. And, you know, me and him got into, like, a crazy verbal exchange at halftime. And um, it was crazy because he knew that I could take it. And he, it was really indirect. He was saying it to the whole team. But I challenged him. He challenged me because I wanted to challenge the team, too. And um, it was so crazy that, you know, we came out of locker room. And then, you know, we just shook hands like, hey, we know we had to do that. You know, it was like we were people thought we were about to fight. And then it was just me and him had so much love for each other. It was like we had to do that to just get the team going. All right, let's go. And man, and, and it's crazy that you say that that championship game. I don't know if you know, I came off the bench the whole the whole tournament. 
uh, that that also uh, the final four game he had got injured, you know, going to the doctor, trying to get himself healthy two minutes into the championship game. He's out. I'm starting. I mean, I, I'm playing 30 the rest of the game now, basically, you know, fulfilling this spot. And, you know, he got me ready for that. He got us ready for that as a team. He got us ready to win that championship with, even without them, without him. And that's that's how strong of a presence he is. That's how strong of a player that he is. And just those games before that, the attitude and the energy that he instilled in us, that he could sit back and not play, and we were still able to get the championship, man. So, like, yeah, he's one of my favorite players of all time and, and one of my best, best, one of my good friends now of, of, of all time just because of, the passion and intensity that he plays with. Uh, he's a winner, man. He's a, he's a winner, man. And it's not one thing that he could do that you may say stand out, but he does everything, man. And, it, and it's unbelievable, all the intangibles. Obviously, that the Bayheim's Army team is going to go down in history for a ton of different reasons. Maybe the most talented roster ever. Definitely the first time Syracuse has ever won. And mm -hmm. one of the best Elam ending finishing shots that we've seen. But, like, the Kiefer Sykes story is way more – than that TBT run, and, and we'd be dumb, we'd be foolish to not talk about your journey to the NBA. Obviously, the TBT is a big part of that, like you said. But mm -hmm. can you just give the people who are listening who maybe only know you from TBT on what you've been through, where you've been, and how you got to the Pacers where you are right now? Whew. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> you know, it's crazy because, uh, you know, after I just had this game of, uh, in Madison Square Garden versus the Knicks, you know, people have um, just my pro career laid out and to see it in front of my face, you know, all these, and, I, and I've done it in such a short time, you know, in five years abroad, my first year is in the D league. So this is my seven year pro. Um, I played in a number of countries. Uh, like you said, I played four times in summer league, uh, two training camps. Um, but, you know, even before my pro career, I want to tell people like where it started. For me, man, just a small, small kid in a in a basketball city where it's one of the meccas of basketball. One like, don't supposed to be here, you know. If 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 you know if someone's on the outside looking in, you know, everyone in my city is ranked above me. Um, everyone on my team is ranked above me. So I'm playing grammar school. Um, you know, none of the schools, which is you know. I don't know if you know how Chicago works. It's like South Side, West Side. Like it's different sides of town. I felt I felt like in my heart, no one on the South Side where I'm from, no high school really wanted me because it's kind of like in, in Chicago, you, you're getting recruited by these schools. So me, I go all the way to the other side of town to Marshall, a powerhouse school from Hoop Dreams, Patrick Beverly, Alfonso McKinney, as you know, my best friend. Um, you know, a school all the way on the other side of town who just won the city and state champ championship you know, in one year, which that's rarely happens. I think it's happened, it's happened four or five times out of all in, in all of history, you know, a straight powerhouse. I go to this school, you know, a small kid, not ranking. I just wanted to, to make a name for myself. And I felt like going to somewhere with some clear ground, I, I, that's my best chance to do it. And um, man, I was, you know, also, you know, my parents put me ahead of grade. So I was already small and ahead of grade. You know, I went to college as the youngest freshman in the country. So I was 13 going into high school, traveling an hour back and forth to school. That's how bad I wanted it. And um, like I said, if you look back on the journey, uh, many times I could have just, you know, stopped and gave up. Um, I had plenty of reasons too, you know, for those reasons that I just named. Then um, I finally get some recruitment and I'm so excited that I'm getting recruited. It was two schools recruiting me as a junior, East Illinois and Wisconsin Green Bay, that I just took the offer. I'm like, nobody never wanted me. Is somebody finally calling me saying they want me? I don't know where this school is. I don't know what conference it is. I, I don't know. I'm like, I'm going to play. Like, they said they got two guards leaving. You know, I was really just happy to get a college degree. Like, I don't, and I have the movie Shot Town. I don't know if you know, like, the intro of the movie is saying, like, I'm just going to take basketball as far as I can. These are things that I'm saying in high school. Because I never in my mind thought I would be in the NBA, like, you know, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to just go. Now I'm going to a mid-major just because I'm getting a, a college degree, you know, for my parents. We were struggling. Now my parents don't have to pay for school. Like, my mom is happy. That's the biggest burden and the biggest accomplishment I thought ever at the time. And, um, you know, me just continuing to believe in myself and work hard as I got on that level. Uh, it was the NCAA, so it's like even playing field now. You know, I played AAU for Mac Urban Fire, barely played. 
you know, getting to see guys, Bradley Beal, Austin Rivers, all these guys in my class, Michael Kidd Gilchrist that's like about to get paid millions. And I'm like, I got to keep working, keep working. You know, then I get to college, even playing field. You know, if I score 20, you know, I could be, you know, number one in the country in scoring just like the guys in North Carolina. So that's when I start to realize, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, now I'm pretty much on an even playing field. I got to just get to work. And, uh, you know, I became one of the top basketball players, um, one of the best collegiate players um, in the country, you know, finishing up my senior year. But, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just, you know, letting you know how it is because then I, I turn pro, don't get drafted. I do 30 workouts. Like, I mean, to tell, to you know, to give people my story, I feel like I have one of the best NBA stories ever because just the amount of things I went through. I, in my house right now, I got about 40 jerseys from <laughs> NBA teams where I went and just worked out for the team. You know, like, you know, people don't even understand. I went to the G League, then go to the G League elite camp after that year, go to all these mini camps. I go over, then I go to South Korea, hurt myself so I can't go to mini camps. And I'm like, all right, I have to reroute. I got to go to the second division in Turkey, which people don't go to the second division to the NBA. You know, then I keep working, playing on one of the worst teams where we were, you know, the bottom two teams get dropped out of the league. But I led the league in scoring. You know, somebody saw me uh, playing the Champions League, get the Champions League scoring record. Um, then, you know, I bounced. Somebody wanted me in China. I'm like, all right, you know, people say you got to stay in the Euro League in Europe where these guys like Luka Doncic, Luka, Luka and uh, Frank Capazzo, you know, these guys get to the NBA, uh, Rudy Fernandez, you know, uh, Nico Mears is playing the Euro League, And I'm like, you know, I'm going to go to China. They got uh, more money. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys playing the NBA. So, man, it's just been a long, drawn out process for me. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm finally here. I, I just kept trying to follow the path of what would get me to the NBA. And, you know, last year I saw guys from Australia, you know, LaMelo Ball, Josh Giddy, RJ, RJ Hampton, all these guys getting to the NBA. So I was like, let me go to Australia. And I went there and, um, man, played in the TBT, you know, played back in his G League now. And, and now I'm here. So that's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. That's all there is. There's more to it, but I just tried to give you as much as I can, but also uh, not, not draw it out too long. But man, no. it's, you know, in China, we play preseason games versus NBA teams, losing about 60, 70, 80. And, <laughs> man, I've been through so much, man, just to, to, to be here. And it's, and it's amazing, to be honest. No, that's uh, – uh, honest to God, it's the most amazing story to get to the NBA. It has to be. Um, mm -hmm. I know Andrew's got more questions. Just to follow up with that story, obviously mm -hmm. your favorite country to play in is America. You know, obviously mm -hmm. playing in the NBA. But beyond America, overseas, whether it was South Korea, Australia, whatever, where was your favorite place to play? My favorite place to play, man, had to be was great, which is crazy, is uh South Korea. Uh, my my rookie year, we won a regular season title, and maybe because we won. So I'm not saying this league is better than other leagues. You know, I I didn't say this is most challenging, but the, the where I had the most fun, the most fun, where I enjoyed was South Korea. We had a team, we had a dominant team. Um, we won a regular season. We won a championship at the end. Um, the fans are, are, are fun. It's a, it's a free flowing league where there's only two Americans. So you're going to be able to play. And, um, you know, it wasn't as it, it's, it's definitely pressure and responsibility. But, you know, some other countries are much more cutthroat. You know, the NBA is much more cutthroat. And, um, yeah, it was, it was just much more fun. man. they showed so much love. And, uh, you know, other places is pressure to win <laughs> from the coaches, from the fans and things like that. But. Um, there was just genuine love. We was able to hang up a banner and it was my first year abroad. So, you know, that got me acclimated to, you know, new cultures, new experiences and um, to have so much success where, you know, when you go overseas, it's, it's a nerve wrecking time. You, you're very nervous, very confused, very scared. And, um, you know, for me to play with uh, one of the guys that I trained with, his name was David Simon. You know, he's 39 years old, still dominating playing and to be around all those good vets. Um, it was just probably one of my most memorable moments, and um, especially in my when I was young in my career. So, you've had a lot of stops. I'm guessing you have a lot of interesting stories. The TBT has been posting a bunch. There mm -hmm. was a guy who was playing in Israel, and he had to duck down on the ground because there was like a airstrike warning. Marshall Marshall Henderson played in Iraq. Like, do you have a a one crazy moment or story that sticks out to you that you were like, I cannot believe this is happening right now? 
Mm, I got I got a few. Let me think of uh think of something good. Um something crazy. <laughs> uh doesn't have to be crazy, it could be cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I've had so many experiences, man. Um I don't know if I want to give you something good or bad. Um We can also come back to it if you want. Yeah, let's come back. Let me think on that one. Because like, I I've been to so many places. Question. I'm like, my mind is racing on like every country. Like, what, 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 what happened here? What happened here? Let, I, I, we could come back to that one. And because uh, I want to give you something fresh. I, I, I don't want to, you know, give you something negative because there's a lot of negative things in these mm -hmm. places. But uh, I definitely want to give you something interesting more than just something that's just cool and positive. Something that's interesting. We can jump. We can jump to the NBA here because that's the exciting that's stuff that's happening right now. So, mm -hmm. your second career, your first career start, Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. Your second career start. You're matched up with Kyrie in his first game of the year. Mm -hmm. Just talk a little bit about you know what's going through your mind in both of those moments. Well, it's, man, it's it's it's, it's crazy. Um, my first. NBA bucket, you know, comes at New Year's Eve versus the Bulls, you know, my hometown team to end a, a great year for me, as you know, you know, like I said, played in Australia, playoffs, TBT. So then, uh, yeah, to start the year and uh, to be, to be, you know, in the NBA, playing a lot of minutes, starting, playing in Madison Square Garden, I just feel like I, it was meant, like, People don't even know how much of a Kyrie Irving fan that I am. I, I can say this now that we're done playing. <laughs> but um, I really felt like I was chosen or like, you know, I was chosen. Like anything could have happened to where anybody else on that date could have been playing. He could have came back on any date based on the, the, the circumstances, you know. You know, with him playing on the road at home, whoever created the schedule in life. And with guys having COVID and things like that and me being on his team, like it was really meant. Um, I, I recently did a a East Bay giveaway, I mean, give back to uh, my high school, the kids at my high school to start their season off. And I gave them all Kyrie's because he's my favorite player and because I felt he needed love and respect for what he stood for, what he's standing for, like not even just for COVID, just as a human being for what he's done in our in, in the league and the world today. Um, just the things he speaks out on, you know, speaking on the WNBA compensation, um, you know, just equal rights. A lot of the things he was doing with George Floyd, uh, you know, him winning a championship, being one of the most talented players. He's someone that really inspires me on and off the court just because of how deep he is. And um, so it's crazy all year. I'm like, man, the NBA, you know, they done made him retire, you know, basically pushed him to retirement. Um, I'm like, man, nobody even talking about it. Like, this is something that it's going to go down in history, like something that is like Michael Jordan walking away from the game. But, you know, I'm like, we're not going to realize it until we go back like that. One of the best players in the game is not playing. Like, I, just imagine his mental, you know, just imagine his fit, his mental. And um, so, man, it just was it was so it was surreal, you know, when he was coming back. And for me to play against him, it was just like, man, that's everything for me. Like at this point now, I, whoever we play next, I mean, Curry, all these guys are next. But like this was the the guy for me so uh man these day these last couple of days has been crazy man to play in the mecca basketball and you know d rose from chicago in preseason i had just hit a you know hit a three versus them over him and he was my idol growing up from chicago so you know going back into madison, madison square garden i was like you know d rose not playing i want to get free and have fun you know i'm starting and uh really man i was just thinking man i, I just want derrick rose to acknowledge me whatever however i perform today I know D Rose is gonna be somewhere watching his team. I want him to acknowledge this this other kid from Chicago. So that was pretty much my mindset. I mean, he he did it, but I'm sure you know it has. There's been conversations because I know people in his circle. So I mean, I know that he knows me and things like that. But you know, I basically I'm, I was saying going into this game, like I want him to know that I could play. You know, after whatever I, after this game, I want him to know that I could play. And that's and I'm sure he he saw he scored 22 points, so I, I could play. And uh. And then, yeah, man, for the next game to play another New York team on a back-to-back, -back, on a flight, you know, home game versus Kyrie Irving, Katie, and James Harden, man, 
you, you got to feel chosen. Like I was chosen, you know, even early this year, Isaiah, this has been a great year for me. Isaiah Thomas first game back was versus me. You know, he had 42, <laughs> but uh, all the points wasn't on me, but you know, people may thought it was it, but you know, I just, and then he got caught up to the Lakers, but I just felt like, you know, all of these moments were just little small cues from God that, Hey, you here, like you're chosen as well. Like you helping them shine light. And this stage is for you also, you know, people going to see Kyrie. That means for sure they're going to tune in and see you tonight. You know, so it was like, man, it's, it's really been unbelievable, man. And I'm just keeping my head down, staying focused and not really trying to look up to the end of the year. But, um, you know, just trying to put together another great year, man, and try to top one from last year because I had an awesome year. But it's been a, a hell of a start, man, I'll tell you that. Obviously, like any athlete, like you're not going to sit here and be content with where you are or anything like that. And that's not really why I'm bringing this up. But have you had a chance to take a step back, soak it all in and be like, you know, I did it. I'm in the NBA. I'm starting. I'm playing these guys like like I, I accomplished a goal, like a huge goal. Man, it's been crazy because uh, it's it's crazy that you say that. Like, yes, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard when you're in season. You know, I'm watching film every morning, every day. Like, to, I'm I'm definitely, you know, just continuing to push. But um, yeah, to hear it from so many people, like you know, to hear it from you. I had another little interview before. You know, I had an interview after the game in Madison, and people are you know continuing to bring it up. Um, I guess it really didn't get surreal until my son just earlier today was excited that I'm on 2K. Cause I never play. And I told him before, like just random, like I'm not going to ever play 2k until I'm on it. So, you know, for him to get out of school and him to get on 2k and cause he was at the game last night and, and to see me on there. Yeah. We were kind of excited. I'm like, Hey, boost me up to 99. Like I always want to be on here. Boost me up to 99. I'm like, put me against Steph Curry. One of the better players, you know, just me taking it in in that moment. But I really, it, it's been hard for me to take in. I, I would say another moment I kind of took it in was, you know, last night, towards the end of the game where they went up about 12, we got a technical, so they, they pretty much had control of the game. It was like a minute left. And, uh, you know, Kyrie Irving is at the free throw line. Kevin Durant is on the side talking trash. James Harden is talking trash to Lance. And, you know, that's when the moment when I looked around, because, you know, at, at the, in the game, I'm just competing. Like, I'm like, dang, these guys are regular. But then, you know, some snap, like, bro, you just been competing. You don't even realize, it made me realize, like, this is really Kyrie at the line. KD right here, like I'm looking at him, looking at his shoes, and, and James Harden talking trash. I'm like, Shh. I'm like, man, like you really here? So I would say those have been my two moments. But man, I'm trying to really make an imprint on this league. So at the same time, man, I'm just humble and hungry. How fun was Lance Stevenson going off in that five minute man, stretch? Man, that was the, that was the most fun thing ever like I was so excited for him I mean it was crazy because me and him was just in New York you know putting in extra work at Chris Brickley's gym you know on a day off and you know just me always being a fan of him you know him being a fan of Sebastian Telfair seeing those guys you know seeing a movie through the fire knowing that they both went to Lincoln and um you know I played Lance Stevenson in China so he's a big name you know and just to uh just to see how hard he worked and you know for me to take my journey you know, and to see him go to China and working his way back in the league, you know, he was on Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Thomas's team. We just played uh, recently as well. So um, to see his grind, man, to see that payoff and uh, to see like, you know, that energy take you over when you when you, you know, back at home or, you know, you you back somewhere where the, the, the game just it's just it's just a different type of energy when you have those moments in basketball where. Um, it's not, it wasn't nothing about makes or misses. He was out there just in a zone, you know, based on just his love of the game and his comfortability of being in Indiana before and it all coming back out and him having that moment, man. I, I looked like he was about to drop a tear in a moment. So I'm like, man, it was just electric, man. The place was electric, standing ovation. And those are moments like basketball is made for, you know, out despite the winning losses. Like he set NBA records, man. I was over there jumping, doing 360s. I don't know if you saw it. It was like, the craziest, the craziest, one of the craziest stretches, probably the craziest stretch I ever seen in my life when it comes to, like I said, me appreciating the grind and, you know, it, it coming into one moment, one opportunity, man. It was, it was, it was, it was probably, yeah, one of the most amazing things I've seen in a long time. I, say, I've, watching that game on TV, obviously we talked about it. Like Dwayne Washington was my teammate in, in college. Mm -hmm. So like I'm watching as much for, KD, 
Kyrie, you know, mm-hmm. Harden, obviously the TBT guys as well, but I'm watching for Dwayne too. And mm-hmm. then, and then Lance Stevenson goes nuts. It's like, Oh, you know, not that he's not, the, he's at the end, the other side of his career. Like you don't expect it, you know, you, mm-hmm. and you're watching for all these all-stars and then it's just good old Lance Stevenson outscoring the three of those guys in, yeah. in a five minute stretch. It's just, I mean, that's why, ba- I mean, it's like, how can you not be in love with basketball for moments like that? Yeah, man, I'm watching. It's like, it's Kevin Durant he's scoring on. It's James Harden. He's shimmy and James Johnson. Like, <laughs> this is the number two team in the East. This is not, like, this is not anybody. These are five or three of the top, probably five, ten talents in the, in, the, in the world. So for him to just be running right at them, man, that, that was, like I said, I think that was, like I said, because of the stage, because of where he came from and just coming right into the league and scoring 20 and a quarter, like, bro, that was probably one of the most supernatural, superhuman things I've seen. And uh, I got a lot of respect for Born Ready, man. And I'm, and I'm, I'm happy we've been ba- we've been uh, battling other guys together. You know, we definitely, man, been pulling, you know, pulling from each other. And, man, I don't know if he signed, but, man, that was great energy, man. You could tell that, you know, Indiana loves him. So – I think we could probably have a, a two hour interview with you. And what right. that really means is this is just the first of, you know, many interviews to come with you with us. But be- before we get you out of here today, I want to give you an opportunity to talk about your charity. You mentioned a little bit, give back to your high school and you were posting on Instagram. I think it was just two days ago. So I wanted to, you know, give you the floor to talk about your, your charity. Yeah. So my charity uh, is called the free 10 foundation. So, um, it was inspired and birthed through the documentary about my life that's on Amazon Prime, Chi Town, which is, you know, Chicago. So, you know, I was blessed to have this film that, you know, followed me from, you know, my last couple of years of high school, junior and senior year, and then my collegiate career, you know, as I played four years there. And, um, you know, me just growing up in Chicago through poverty, you know, I just thought life was normal, you know, growing up with less, dodging gangs, dodging bullets. Um, surviving, seeing people die, things like that, things of that nature, just, you know, me growing up in that environment, it's just just what we had to navigate through. But as that movie came out and, you know, people, you know, I got to see the reactions of people, how people like, we're so motivated and inspired by you. And um, I quickly realized that that, like, wow, this is like, why are they inspired? Like, why? And it was like, you know, this is not normal. And, um, And, you know, I was, it was, it was just amazing to me because, you know, at the time the movie came out, I was in a position where I was a professional basketball player making, you know, solid money and I'm okay. But, you know, as you see in the movie, my friends are still in jail. People are still getting shot, you know, even to this day. Um, it, it's, it's heavy on my heart because, you know, we, we losing five to eight, five to maybe a thousand people a year to gun violence in my community in Chicago. Uh, we losing thousands of people to uh, mass incarceration on top of COVID, on top of the presidency, you know, that we've been, the presidency issues that we've been battling these last um, decade, you know? So, um, so for me, I just, you know, continue to pray, like, how can I, you know, give back? I, I realized that, you know, this movie could have been about, um, you know, Isaiah Thomas that played for the Detroit Pistons. It could have been about Derrick Rose. It could have been about Anthony Davis. It could have been about Jabari Park, all these guys that are number one, number two picks, guys that got championship rings. But it's about me, who I wasn't even in the NBA at the time. And it's titled Shy Town. So, I, you know, I just felt like I had, you know, to do something to, to, to find a way to give back. And, uh, you know, I'm passionate about my community. And I ended up creating a foundation um, to support families that go through, you know, crisis, who's, who's underprivileged, who, um, you know, face gun violence issues that maybe lost a parent, lost someone in their family to gun violence that can't provide for them anymore. Um, and people that lost their family members to mass incarceration who can't provide it anymore. You know, people don't realize those, you know, 500 to 1,000 people that die are usually men, and they're leaving behind two, three kids that now has to be brought up without that, without any, any nourishment, you know, any, any, any love, you know, any, any, any resources. Um, And that's what set us behind. And kids like me, that's our naive, we just think that's normal. And if they don't have that same mindset that I have, that I just felt that I'm gonna still make it. A lot of those kids don't have that mindset. They don't have basketball. Everybody can't shoot a basketball and be good at it or don't even have the time to do it or have the parents that put the hours into it, especially now with as much training as you need. So 
Yeah, the Free Tan Foundation is um, an organization that I created that has, um, you know, we've been just been organic, just creative and finding ways to, to give back to those in need. I literally spend time in the community with the kids and ask them what do they need, you know, ask them what are their dreams. People don't ask these kids enough, what are their dreams? You know, what are they dreaming of doing? What are they dreaming of becoming? Um, you know, we just, now with social media and things like that, everything is just external. We just, you know, putting things on people, everything is getting put out, but no one is really getting down to the source. So, um, you know, I like to think that my, my foundation is unique and, it, and it's a blessing. And yeah, two days ago, I posted that, yeah, I'm having a Martin Luther King service drive, uh, warmth, warmth drive, because uh, it's, it's kind of been like global warming. Usually I have the coat drive in November or December. This is my third annual, but it's, it's finally getting cold here. And, um, you know, we want to give back to the communities, man. Jogging suits, something that they can continuously wear. Because, you know, coats was something that they could wear to school. But now I've added jogging suits, you know, scarves, masks, socks, and things that they would enjoy wearing to school. You know, things that they could, you know, a jogging suit you could wear maybe multiple times a week if you wash it. Um, you could wear it into the spring, you could wear it into the summer. So, so just continue to build and expand and partner. But, um, yeah, philanthropy and... Um, being a philanthropist is something that's just, just big for me and that I want to do, you know, long after my career and want to be one of the best at it. I, absolutely. I mean, it's no surprise to us that a guy like you is doing things like that, man. It's just awesome story. We appreciate your time. I, obviously, if we weren't fans of you already, we're, we're bigger fans now, man. And uh, we're, we're excited to have you on a couple more times on here and excited to- 100%. To, uh, to keep watching you succeed in the NBA with, alongside our, our other guy Dwayne, it's it's a good yeah. it's a good duo. It's a good duo. Yeah, that's my guy, man. That's uh, man, we've been battling out, man. I, I wish the best for him, man. He's been playing well. You know, hopefully he can keep continuing to upgrade his contracts, man. And uh, he's a hard worker. He's super. And uh, yeah, man, let's find time to do this again, man. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the TBT. A uh, huge fan of you all. I see you got the sneakers, man. We we can talk about it a lot. <laughs> we can talk about it a lot, man. Absolutely, man. We appreciate you coming on. As Joey said, good luck rest of the season. Talk soon. All right. Thank you, man. God bless you.